And I guess my second question, and this is relating to BIM coordination. Sure. I, I just started BIM coordinating, and when I'm putting, I'm exporting my files um, in, into a, or I'm exporting as a 3D model and then putting them uh, into Navisworks. Um, as far as in process, does that sound like something you would normally do, or is there a better way that I'm not familiar with? So, um, the most common approach to coordinating in Navisworks is to export your model to a, a DWG file. And, and, and okay. in doing that, essentially what we're doing is we're exporting the 3D geometry of our system. Okay, that might explain, because I'm having, especially like... Um, 90s and things like that are breaking up and then it's taking the curvature of those and just putting them in random places in space um, so it's, the models look kind of messy okay so there's a couple of uh, um, a couple of things to be aware of the first thing is um, by default autosprink is going to export all components as block references so you can see my screen still yes Okay, so I'm going to do a quick export here and show you what I'm talking about. In fact, I'm going to, I'm just going to assign fittings here so you can see what these fittings look like in AutoCAD as well. Um, I've come to realize you know, somewhat recently that there's a setting specifically in Navisworks that will break these block references into individual faces and create a bunch of, potentially create a large quantity of collisions at a single location and that setting is specifically um, unique to Navisworks so if I go ahead and export this to um, I'll just call it a bin test um, and, and I'm assuming that you're following the same process. I'm going to export the models tab only. That way I'm not getting sheet stuff, any sheet tab information in here. Um, in this view element options, these, this additional options button, by default, these should all be selected. If they're not, then you may run into issues with, with things being split up into individual surfaces or faces. Um, but again by default if you haven't gone in here if you haven't clicked on this button none of this should be any different with all of these boxes checked um, I'll do that all the elements looks good we'll get this exported now if I open this drawing in AutoCAD all of these elements when I when selected should be recognized as block references including the fittings and I didn't put any groove fittings I should have done that because I feel like groove fittings are more of an issue than thread fittings but yeah, is AutoCAD going to let me uh, it's going to lock up on me here So would you normally go into AutoCAD and then? No, I, I, I simply just normally was just you gonna, would go to Navis. Yeah, I would just I would I would either append the DWG to a Navis model, or if it's already been appended, then I would just refresh the model. Okay. Yeah, AutoCAD is not wanting to work for me today for some reason. Jeez, come on, AutoCAD. God. Must be it. It must be the coronavirus. Yeah, I caught something there. <laughs> All right, let's, try, let's give it a, one more shot, um, and then I'll launch. Uh, I'll launch uh, Navis and show you this setting location. All right, second time's a charm. Bim test. Okay. Alright, so within the DWG pipe, individual pipe segments will populate as block reference. So this is a single object. Obviously it contains, you know, faces and facets and stuff, but within the DWG itself it is a single 
object, a single block reference object, same for fittings, and same for sprinklers. If I had any uh, grooved fittings, which I don't, and I wish that I had, those would also be recognized as individual object block references, or individual block reference objects. Okay, so, now depending on how your Navis settings are set up, uh, let's try this one, I guess. Um, there, you know, these objects may come in broken up into individual faces, which is not necessarily what we want to do. We want to keep them, we want to keep our fittings, sprinklers, and pipe as, as individual block reference objects. So in the options, um, under, oh man, where is this? I apologize, I've lost, uh, forgotten where this setting is. Oh, here it is, model performance. So on load here, collapse on convert. Depending on what how this is set up, the program will break these components into different uh, faces. So generally speaking, we want to do either all objects, layers, or files. If we, if we set this to composite objects, that's going to break, and I'll just set that here really fast, and uh, bring this in. You can see how Navis will handle and process all of these components. So now these are all individual faces. Pipes are still cylinders, so that's good. Sprinklers are probably going to be a bunch of different faces. But see, these fittings are all they've been broken up. So if you have something hitting this fitting, you're gonna it's the program Navis is gonna populate, you know, 10 or 15 collisions just in this one spot. Versus if we had left this option set to all objects. See if I refresh will change this. Yeah. So I refresh this model and now it's selecting the individual, you know, the entire fitting now. Same for the sprinkler. It selects the entire sprinkler. So just something to be aware of. The way that Navis settings are, are established will directly affect the way that components are brought in from DWGs. So I think if you're following this process, you should be in good shape. You might need to, you know, double check some settings in uh, in Navis to make sure you're getting the results you're looking for. And I'm not sure if exactly if that's exactly the issue you were having, or if there was something different. Um, I'll definitely adjust my process and see if that fixes. But I, I think you definitely gave me a very good starting point. Excellent. All right. Thank you. You got it.